when I was too uh, bored and about my normal job and I was looking for something different and Chewy come from the from the space and, and told me about the TC and all that stuff and I was really confused and I got like two or three months uh, really confused about what's going on. I, I, I wasn't released that what thing is real and, and, and not, but in that moment I, I knew that I was entering into the space and the blockchain and all this stuff. Yeah, maybe almost two years ago with Chewy, my sensei. And yeah, and, and I'll pass it to to Bear. Yeah, thank you, Asif. Yeah, I think for me it was also like almost two years ago or one one year and a half ago. Um and for me I think it was more with uh NFTs. Uh, because I, I remember like hearing about a way of providing some uh property of ownership to to photographies. I really like photography. So I've always wondered like, you know, th there's always this problem of, of uh copyrights and and how do you know who is this photography from on the internet? So when I heard that there was a way to um, prove that that photograph uh, was owned or belonged to someone, that's where I, I started like being really curious about it. And, and that led me to understanding the blockchain. And yes, same like with ACID, it took me some a couple of months to really understand what was happening because you start learning about the blockchain but but then you need to understand what crypto cryptography is and then you go back to bitcoin and understanding all the fundamentals so it's so it's kind of like a rabbit hole that that you start falling through uh but really fun and 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 yeah super exciting that's when when i realized that this was gonna be like totally game changing and it was gonna transform everything that we do so yeah i feel that was like my my first approach uh, to to the blockchain and, and to the space um and i'll pass it to um uh to tam yeah hey thanks got it yeah, I, what a great question. I love this question because it like really surprised me. I guess I want to say that there was like, I'm I'm maybe amongst the older in this group. And so there's definitely like a before internet and at, after internet for me. So I had this really strong reaction to the internet when I first saw it in my Russian cousin's dorm room <laughs> when he was um, on IRC writing in Cyrillic to his friends in Moscow, like they're just writing. So I, I definitely had this moment that this ability to communicate outside of the normal uh, fee structures, like to call was super expensive at the time, phone calls were very difficult and cumbersome to make before VoIP, you know. So it was very much like I just remember a lightning going off and being like, this changes everything and switching my major to computer science. And then um, I, in the end of 2016, I was on a parental leave and I was following my interests and I came across a TED talk and it's uh, this Canadian named Dan Tapscott and the talk was called How Blockchain is Changing Money and Business. And I watched it and like, so I, I feel like I'd heard about cryptocurrencies and I heard about Bitcoin, but it wasn't, it just didn't click with me. And then I watched this TED talk and he used like the one word that gave me that lightning moment. And that one word was disintermediation. And as soon as he said that word, it just, again, I was like, oh, this changes everything. <laughs> like, this is what I need to do with my life now. Uh, and it was really hard. I mean, there's stuff at the time. I remember the first place I went was Coursera and there was like a really old Princeton course that was like understanding Bitcoin. And it was really like the math and um and computer science of bitcoin and i because i was just like i can't believe like okay that was a great ted talk applause applause but now like really really <laughs> is what he's saying could it possibly be real so i spent a, a lot a while like just trying to learn about it like just trying to like climb up that curve to understand more and more and more and more 
And of course, like everyone started speculating because I feel like that's what most people do. It's good experience just to get a little skin in the game too. too. So um, yeah, and that, and I just, there's never any like unwavering confidence that this is, this, these has already changed our, our future, our present, and will continue to change our future in really big, powerful ways. And with the caveat that it's like, it might not be what we think it is, you know? <laughs> like we, we thought the internet was gonna level the playing field for everyone. It turns out we got Facebook and, and Amazon and, you know, Google and Twitter. And like, so there's, you know, I, I maybe also remain a little skeptical that while I really believe in the power of this technology, it's also humans that design and develop technologies. So it is whatever we make it to be. And that's why I think token engineering is so important. And I'll pass to Nate. Thanks, Dan. Uh, yeah, so when did I get, you knew I was going to be involved in the blockchain. Um, I would say it was late 2000, it was the middle, I was really interested in uh, uh, NASA and USGS and these kind of science research um, government jobs and the, the administration of, of those agencies. Um, and so uh, that was my first, uh, you know, I, I read a smart contract, an article on smart contracts. I can't remember exactly the title of it. I would love to find it again. But um, at the time, I was learning a lot about like Dwight Waldo and and Frederick Taylor and Max Weber. And, and we, they were all articulating these uh, fundamental issues uh, around public administration. And I was reading the smart contract article and I was like, man, this is a very interesting uh, solution to these uh, fundamental problems that they were describing uh, uh, during my master's program. And then I started getting uh, interested in how, you know, smart contracts could be used to actually coordinate humans on a, on a local level. And I, I just went from there. I uh, got tried to get involved as into DAOs in particular because I thought that was kind of the the only, you know, at the time, uh, area where people were actually looking to use these tools as a method of governance. So, um, yeah. So, uh, right then I knew that I wanted to be a part of this industry and keep going with it and, uh, develop my own ideas around it and continue to this day. So, uh, that's why I got involved. Um, so yeah, um, I will pass it over to uh, Wonka. Thanks, Nate. Um, I think I've already told this story to some of you, but um, on like back 2015, um, I had a restaurant with my brothers, and one day of the sudden, my brother said, "Hey, I don't want to work in in this restaurant anymore." Uh, I just read uh, Ethereum's wi white paper, and this is going to be life changing. And um, like we knew a little bit about Bitcoin, but for us, the value proposition of Ethereum, um, since the white paper and to, to its fulfillment until um, um, proof of a stake, um, yeah, it, it 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 was really really life changing to be able to have. Um, the cool EVM things that we can have. So um, actually, I when I heard that, I told my brother like, "Hey, stop thinking about those like imaginary things. Continue working at the restaurant." And we had a fight because he wanted like, "No, uh, like this of the restaurant is a nonsense." And um, like then when it was like seven dollars. Because uh, after the ICO, um, we were like, "Oh, let's 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 buy as a family," and because we we didn't have funds, neither my brother or myself, so we like gathered the funds and we made like a collective pool in my family, and we made our first buy on 2016. And since then, it's been a crazy ride. We participated in the DAO. We met Grief because he helped to recover the funds. Um, from uh, the DAO to what is, is Ethereum right now, but I didn't know how to contribute because I am a human 
social person and not like a, a technical person. So, um, yeah, the, at that point, I was also starting to study my my degree on conflict management and um, by the learnings of the split and the fork of the chain from uh, what happened in the DAO, I, I started thinking that um, this and noticing that these organizations also have conflicts and there ne needs to be like preparation for it. So nothing after that, um, like we started having these um, Ethereum Colombia talks and these brought us to meet again, uh, grief in, and um, Mateo was the first one participating in Giveth. And then like, when I saw Mateo was in Giveth, I was like, oh my God, Mateo, I don't wanna be, working at a university no more because at that point I was working at a university and since then um, it's been amazing and amazing, amazing, everything amazing. Um, I will pass it to Bianca. Thank you, Juan. It's so great to um, listen to all these stories. It's so nice. Thank you, Gideon, for putting that question there. I think it's very interesting. So my first, when I, I realized that I wanted to be part of this, it was when I was doing my exchange program in the U.S. I stayed there for two years since 2019 to 2021. Oh. And during that time, I had a chance to be part of this person's life. And he was so um, passionate about blockchain and DAOs and make a difference. And he would always share with me everything that he was doing. I didn't understand anything by that time, but he would always... Um, share everything that he was achieving and I started studying about finances and I am a psychology student so I was trying to put together financial and psychology back then and then I started to share with him my ideas so he was like wow you are gonna make something big if you come to to DAOs and Web3. So I didn't know anything in how to do it and what to do. And I was like, I have no idea. So he um, engaged me to study more and learn more about it. So he will always um, be around to teach me something. And he was friends with Griff. So one time Griff was in town and he invited Griff to come over and have dinner. Um, and that's when he was like, I have this friend coming over tonight and I think it makes a lot of sense if you start from what he does because he does a lot of the things that I think connects with you. So that's when I met Griff. And we shared a lot. They were talking a lot of things that I had no idea. <laughs> and it was very funny because I was just like, they're sitting on the table and my brain was just and going away. And I started learning more, more about blockchain. And then I came to Gravity and I saw that a lot of things make sense then because... I wasn't someone from tech, I wasn't an entrepreneur or anything like that, but I had a lot of passion and my psychology background. So then a lot of things make sense for me and I started to stick around. So yeah, that was it for me. I will pass to Rex. Ooh, uh... Well, my I'm, I'm much more recent uh, to, to to blogging. I, I I'd heard of it before when I was a friend who was pretty into into it in 2017, but I didn't think much of it. And from around 20, 
19, 20, when I started my uh, university degree in it was economics with computing I did. Um, well, you know, the marriage of, of both of those is, is, is blockchain. So I ended up reading more about it, uh, doing a fair bit on uh, like the talks <laughs> with, uh, with lecturers and so on. Or I completely anti the idea and just playing around with the um the the, the concept surrounding it um and yes I finished my degree and I, I started going to conferences to try and see kind of where where I could fit in and I met two people from Common Stack I met Tam and someone else damn i can't remember her name but she was the one to introduce me to town and well the rest is history so yes uh, i came in late so i'm not sure who hasn't spoken yet uh nt i don't think you've gone yet right yeah okay well um my first time using uh blockchains was like late 2016, early 2017, I had a friend that uh, was uh, his a, a developer and stuff, um, and he showed me a forum where they had like plenty of bounties uh, around a lot of things, and then and they were paid uh, in either Ethereum or Bitcoin, and so I I did a few small work and, and stuff. Eventually, I got to do it was quite informal. I got to do um, a bit of moderation for a subreddit for the EOS blockchain for a few months. Uh, but then the market crash, I, I didn't fully understand the value of blockchains and I thought it, was going to, it wasn't going it was going to end well. Uh, so I focused on, on my studies and all things in life. But then late 2020, my, my friend again, he started working at OneHive um and you know we were chatting and he thought uh, I, I would probably like what they were working on and so i joined and the rest is history and um i'll pass it over to uh as laser uh he's he went already so maybe um maxwell yeah sure um so <clears throat> similar to tam i think uh it's it's you know i had that i, I straddled the pre-internet post-internet and i i like at the end she said you know we got facebook and all that stuff but at the beginning i mean we you know it was we were close to having you know aol be the internet for a while there but but luckily we we took a turn for the better um so yeah i was back in 2011 in may of 2011 and i was fairly fresh off of losing my house in the and the the crash of 08 so I, it was a little tail end I, I hung on to it for a while but um and i was very disenfranchised with centralized uh financial systems and and all that good stuff so um i think a buddy of mine sent me that article around you know someone buying pizza with ten thousand bitcoins or i might be misremembering that i might have heard that later but um it was something where you know i, I either a store i shopped at was like hey we're accepting bitcoin or something like that and and uh me and a buddy got all hyped up about it and bought new graphics cards to start mining bitcoin and and uh yeah it was it, it was appealing to my very uh deeply cynical state of mind around centralized finance uh so uh it was yeah it, i i i would tell anyone and everyone that i talked to hey this is going to be cool this is going to be the future um, and everyone was like, "What are you even talking about? I don't, I don't know what this is." Um, so, I, I have been interested ever since. Uh, Griff has not gone yet. I'll pass it to Griff. If, if you're speaking, we cannot hear you. At least I can't. Oh, yeah. Oh, dang. How about now? Can you hear me now? There we go. 
Yep. Yeah. It looks like my mic doesn't work on these headphones. Uh, the uh, yeah, in twenty in twenty thirteen, at the end of twenty thirteen, I just got obsessed with Bitcoin, and basically, I made some money off of it from like buying in in earlier that year, and I just the more I read, the more I couldn't stop reading, and I just like gave up everything pretty much right away, like within a few months, and just dedicated my life to to like figuring out how to use this to make the world a better place so it was uh it was pretty quick and yeah and it was just because it went from you know a hundred dollars to a thousand dollars and i i and then there all the content i could read it was just so inviting so but i'll pass it back to gideon okay thanks greg um, wow, so, so interesting. Um, this ended up going a little bit longer than what I thought, but it's, it's totally worth it. My my version, pretty brief. I, you know, had done a bunch of work with like, you know, corporate America, it's big tech, and then I like, was doing environmental work and just like getting disillusioned with like the way that the economy, like the way that business was just kind of routing around the social changes that we were doing in the environmental movement. So I was writing a bunch of stuff about how to like, you know, distribute ownership and make things more stakeholder centric and like mission driven and um, hadn't heard anything about blockchain when I was writing this stuff back in like 2011, 20, you know, two, 2012, 2013. And then like right around 2017, early 2017, I met Jack DuRose and uh, did an interview. I wrote an article back then with him um and just like exploring what they're doing in colony and i i really felt like i was talking to somebody from the future um i think i've told this to a few people but like it really did feel like i was just talking to somebody from like a distant future and i was just so blown away and i just thought it was so cool and so that was when it kind of sparked for me and it took me a little while to like come back to it um but then i i ran into jeff from tc and then started talking to griff and then boom that that was it. Um, that was August of last year. Okay, so thanks everybody. That's that's um, it's great to get that background from everybody. Um, so uh, a few things for today. The one thing I want to just um, two things before we jump into the main thing today. Um, don't forget we've got this new uh, community call, uh, different new format for it. We're going to do it as a Twitter space and. Um, you know, so this is going to be in an hour and a half from now on Twitter. There's a link in the doc here, and there's a link. There are a few links uh, on our Discord server to the Twitter space. Um, you know, even if you can't, like, really tune in, um, please just, like, show up and just be there so that, um, you know, we get, like, a critical mass of folks there. You don't, you know, you don't have to be actively listening, but, like, please just be there to kind of show support. Um, I think this, you know, this is not just like a new format in terms of doing it on twitter um as a twitter space um but we're trying like a new approach you know where we're actually going to be talking more about the topic of token engineering and so griff has agreed to um to do kind of a ama ask me anything kind of approach and eduardo is coming back so he's going to do the facilitation should be really cool and the focus is on like what's the tech stack for um you know building a commons on the blockchain so uh, griff is going to talk about the augmented bonding curve and conviction voting and um, we've got a bunch of questions that we've pulled together and it'll be open for other people to ask questions so super psyched please join um and um let's let's give this a shot and see see how it goes so um, that's the one, one announcement. And the second one is uh, earlier this week, um, I had a conversation with somebody from Metagame um, who wanted to just explore whether there's some, um, how, how the TEC might plug in more into the work that Metagame is doing. So it was a little bit wide ranging conversation. It was kind of a, a lot of different, they, they have a lot of stuff going on. I'm not sure exactly how we, how to prioritize all the stuff that they have going on and the offerings. Um, and um, it does feel like we've got a lot of stuff on our plate right now, but um, it's, it seems like 
Well, one, I'm guessing that there are other folks on the call here who probably have more context about metagame. Um, so I wanted to just kind of get that, um, you know, Griff, Tam, others, maybe Honka if, uh, or NT, I don't know if, if any of you have some additional context on it. Uh, and then the second thing is, um, if somebody's interested in following up on that, it would be great. So first question is, who does anybody have like some decent context on metagame? Hey, this is Max. I I dropped for some reason and I joined and I heard metagame. Uh, it, what was the question again? Because I am part of the metagame server. Oh, awesome. Okay, so yeah, uh, I had a I had a call um, with uh, one. I'm forgetting his last name, but he's from Metagame. And uh, he was just basically um, checking in to see about how we might tighten the connection, the relationship between Metagame and the TC. Um, so I'm just asking uh, who here has context and if anybody would be interested in being a point person for that relationship. Um, it would be very easy for me to do that because I am part of that community. So Juan run Juan does a bunch of stuff for metagame. Um he he runs like a bards night every week and stuff like that where he performs music. Um they they launched uh earlier this month, end of no last month. Uh they kind of launched like the 1.0 of their platform. So they're kind of reconnecting with a bunch of DAOs that they had connected with earlier this year or or last year. Um and so yeah, I I'm happy to do that. Um, I know the one request or potential thing that they were looking for is having someone uh, talk with them about they're looking at kind of going into their next phase and and doing a token. So they don't have a token right now. Um, and so they were potentially wanted to talk with someone about token engineering at some point as well. So, um, but yeah, I can, I can certainly do that. Um, I'm not quite as engaged over there as I am here, but close, so. Okay, that's awesome. That's that's great. Um, I will. I'll just drop you a note afterwards and just fill you in on the rest of the stuff that I talked with them about. Um, but you probably know you have you probably have a lot more context than I do. Anybody yeah, else interested? Sorry. Just so I mean, Max, Max will take the lead. It sounds like. But anybody else want to be involved or consulted? I just want to share my perspective. I know a little of metagame, um, but they're so mysterious. <laughs> They're so mysterious. And the the one thing I want to share to have interact, I do see that their their site is new, but every time I've interacted in a metagame thing, you know, like joining and God, it was just so much fun. They really make, I mean, their design, their user experience, everything about when you interact with metagame is really high, high quality fun. But they're very, they're a very mysterious group. I think, I think having a partnership with them would be excellent, Axel. Yeah, absolutely happy to happy to jump in, uh, and I'll connect with Juan and and yeah, Gideon. I'll look for your note. Um, they are they they are very focused on building, right? So I haven't I hadn't been as as involved over there just because I don't have a huge development background. It it took me a little bit to kind of figure out where I could could jump in, but um, yeah, no, they're, it's a great community. They're, they're super fun. So, um, yeah, happy to. Awesome. Thank you. Um, okay. So now let's dive into the main thing we wanted to focus on today, which is, uh, Bear's been doing, Bear and I, but Bear's really taking the lead, um, in trying to define like, how what what will our new like process for coordinating and like coming up with um new projects like as new projects are introduced um by various people from the community how do we essentially digest those things and get them into uh, a flow um of project management and then be able to report back to the community on those things so bear do you want to do you want to take it from here Yeah, for sure. Yeah, thanks, Gideon. Um, yeah, so this is something that Gideon and I, we've been working on. Um, 
I just shared the link here on the chat uh, and also give you if you could just uh, uh, share it on the screen. That that would be great. Um, and well, the the intention of this basically it's been really interesting because wh what we're trying to do is to kind of like replicate and in a way just formalize what we're already kind of like doing right like for example we can take today's call as an example uh, of one project being uh, presented here in the call uh, some people volunteering to be contributors for that project getting some advice from other people that might not contribute to it directly but that they that they have something valuable to say so i feel that in the past few weeks this is something that we've already been doing so this is just kind of like us observing and listening and and trying to put it as a more formal process but really again trying to remain super simple you know and and also uh, taking it as a pilot again i think it's important to 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 understand that this is not supposed to be any fixed process or any anything set in stone but on the contrary be like super open super flexible to change and to adjustment uh, throughout the way so yeah having said that um there's the document that that i shared uh if you want to access it and, and we can just go through it pretty uh, pretty simple let me let me see So it starts with defining basically like the the main goals, right? Um, uh, sorry, Gideon, if you want, I, I send the, the link here on the chat for like a, a new copy of it. So it's not the the older one, like like you mentioned it to me. It's here on the on the Discord uh, chat. So yeah, let's let's start with, with the goals. So it's, it's pretty clear. I think we've been trying to, to become to have a rapid and clear process and an accountability mechanism with, with teams that start working on projects to provide opportunities for the community. And I'm calling this group that we have during these calls active contributors because our people from the community that in a way want, want, they want to be engaged and want to participate in all the, in all the different initiatives that we have. Uh, so a way to, to open opportunities for, for them and for, for everyone. To and to also again keep this pretty simple really easy to understand to understand i feel that that's something that that we really need uh, and to also build capacity for long term and, and strategic planning right this is a, a long term game so so it's important to start building some momentum with the peace and the work we we are doing uh, to to start moving forward with all the work that has to be done and for that it's it's also like answering tam's question from, from last call that she was saying, how, how's this piece, this new piece, it's gonna look like uh, in the coming weeks for how are we gonna work and how are we gonna organize ourselves? So this is kind of like trying to answer, answer that question. So basically the proposal is just to have the two calls a week, exactly like the way we're doing it right now. Uh, and the purpose of that is just to present, coordinate and review the different active projects that we have. Uh, and th this being done between the two groups that, that we are seeing, like the coordination team and the active contributors group, that is the, that is the people here in this call that I'm, that I'm mentioning. Mm -hmm. For the first call, uh, I'm proposing it to be on, on Tuesdays, like the one we have, and I'm calling it Project Started and High Level Advice Session. This is a call where, again, coordination team and active contributors attend. And the purpose of it, it's pretty simple. There are four points that we should cover or that we would cover on, on this call. The first one is like presenting and communicating a project plans, uh, like a new project that is that it's coming up and that is set by either the coordination team in some cases, but it can also be done by any other member of the of this group that want to start something or that think it's important to, to start any new project. Uh, then we would do some kind of like sense making uh, process, some high level advice on, on the relevance, on the impact, on the priority of this project in accordance with the MBB of the TEC, in accordance with the roadmap, once we have it, in accordance with the strategy that we, that we implement. And just agree that that this is something that that we have to do, uh, uh, and that it's and that 
uh, we agree also on the why are we doing this specific project. Then we're assigning the, the, the different tasks from that plan that, that someone already set before the call. This is important to clarify, like the, the project plan is already set before the call. And during the call, we're just uh, asking if there's anyone willing to contribute and start assigning tasks to, to who can do what, right? And this can be determined based on, on the interest, on the time, availability, on the skills, on the experience of, of people, right? Uh, uh, if, they, if they want to volunteer to this work. There are still some questions that, uh, that need to be answered. Again, I think this is still a pro, uh, work in progress. Uh, for example, like, wh what are we going to do if, if there's a project and, and there's, there are some tasks that, that no one is available or suited to take on, right? What are we going to do? Uh, are we going to look for someone outside the, this group in the community? You know, like, I feel there's still uh, some thought on that. So, so you can think about any good answers for that. That would be really appreciated. And then the fourth point is basically defi defining deadlines for those tasks, you know, like starting to, to, to organize on that, on that sense. These would be like the four main points that we would cover on that Tuesday school. And, and then I just wrote like some points that I still think are really important to, to, to mention. Um, the, the active contributors, uh, that this is the group that are not part of the coordination team, they may want to prioritize attending a specifically Tuesday's call because this is the one that is more like on a high level and a bigger scope of things in the TEC. And Thursday's call is a little bit different. We're going to talk about that one in a second. Um, then the other point is after the Tuesday school, the idea is that the team that is formed to, to work on that specific project, they can organize, they can coordinate, they can work in whatever way they prefer, right? They, they can decide that uh, that's up to them. They can set up as many calls as they want, as they, as they require. They can do it async. It doesn't really matter. The idea during this call is just to set the team, and then they can start working after that. Uh, then after, the, after this call, the idea is also to be able to provide some space for a more thoughtful uh, feedback, not just during the call, but sometimes people need some time to assimilate the project and really be able to provide good feedback. So the idea is to provide this feedback asynchronously. Uh, I'm suggesting to have a limit of three days. So if the project is presented on a Tuesday, uh, people would have until Friday to provide this initial feedback on the, on the, on the project plans uh, and they can they can do it yeah asynchronously um, then the first review session for this project we would happen nine days after that it's presented so that would mean on the next thursday not the not on that week but on the next week uh, that would allow them to have some time to uh, to work on that project uh, and that, then it can be then it can be reviewed uh, another important point clarity uh, uh, we're suggesting to serve as the main plat uh, project management platform and also serve as an agenda to be easy to assign tasks and deadlines to, to everything uh, on the project. Uh, and also mention that multiple projects started right on, on these calls. Um, it doesn't have to be just, just one. Um, then we can jump into the second call that would happen on, on Thursdays. Uh, the attendees are the same ones, active contributors, but now the project owners uh, that were set on, on Tuesdays or, or when the project was started, they also attend because the main purpose of this call is to, is three basic points. Uh, first of all, we're thinking on taking the first half of the call to support any project that is kind of like stuck, uh, like uh, that really needs attention, and we can take some time to to provide feedback, to answer questions, to really find a solution for that, for that project. And then the second half of that call, we can just provide a really quick, concise updates from the rest of the active projects. And this can be done, by, of course, by the, by the owners of these projects and, and tasks. And yeah, the third point is the same thing. Like with these updates, people attending the call can just provide any more more feedback, answer any questions. 
and do any adjustment accordingly to, to that project. Um, some notes for that call. Um, well, like I mentioned, these results are presented by the owners of the tasks from each project. Um, and then once a project is active, uh, I'm calling it like that, it will be reviewed every Thursday. So it started on a Tuesday, nine days after it had its first review session on a Thursday. And then every Thursday, uh, moving forward, will be reviewed. This trying to provide some accountability, but also some window to provide any support that is needed for the project. And this will continue happening on, until the project is completed. Um, Clarity, again, serves as our agenda and our main tool for uh, planning and, and organizing the projects and, and also presenting the results to the, to the group. Um, and also, during this call, uh, the coordination team would be kind of like serving and supporting uh, to keep the format of the call as, as it is meant to be so we can really focus on, 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 on the purpose of, of this call. And lastly, maybe this is also something that people uh, uh, might be wondering in the differentiation between the coordination team and the active contributors. Uh, co coordination teams can also be active contributors of different projects. So in that case, maybe uh, uh, the, the coordination team member will be presenting as the owner of, the, of, a, of a, an active project. So we would be kind of like just changing hats from from that uh, from that uh, from that role, and then there would be other people from the coordination team just making sure that the format of the call is just uh, maintained and and we are actually doing what we what we need to do. Uh, and that's it. That's that's basically the the idea. Having these two calls. Also, if if right now it sounds a little bit confusing, I tried to summarize it on an image on a uh, diagram at the top of the document if you if you zoom into it you can see kind of like how the process looks like uh with with initiating with the, with the creation of the project by by someone and then having it presented and getting some high level advice on tuesday schools then three days after uh well then you have three days to provide the async uh, feedback until friday and then on the Thursday call is the first review session, and that will continue again until the project is finalized. And during this whole process, uh, all the all the project team or all the contributors working on that project, they will organize and, and work as as they prefer. Um, and yeah, that would be that would be basically the main idea. Just to finish, I, I would like to say that I think it's really important. And uh, to uh, and this is the, what we were talking about today in the call at the at the beginning. Everyone sharing their their calls, uh, their their sorry their their journeys, uh, starting on the Web three space. I think we really need need to, to rely on that on that experience on that collective knowledge that everyone has. Uh, I think that's one of the main intentions that that this project wants to, to, to provide, uh, to, to, to keep it open for everyone's uh, expertise and, and experience, because I think that's like the most valuable thing that, that we have. So yeah, that would be, that would be it. Now I, I'll open the floor for any feedback, any comments, any questions, any ideas, and, and yeah. Uh, I would love to start. Uh... And start saying, uh, you know, congratulations and thank you, and thank you both, uh, Bear and Gideon, for making this. Uh, I do have some concerns or some stuff that I think uh, is it is missing. Um, first of all, um, considering or uh, is, if I'm understanding correctly, this is a bit more uh, high level and everything. So um, I would I would request or I would really appreciate if i don't know maybe in the tuesday in the tuesday call in the pre started sessions uh we include the our not yet formalized advisory advisory network of teas um because uh that's going to be important if not i see i can see ourselves going back again to the same thing as as, as always 
so that's the first thing. And then maybe probably like having set periods for starting projects or for proposing new projects. So say maybe the Tuesday call just happens once every quarter or something like that, where we have sessions with uh, other key members of the TA community to watch projects, to advise on projects, even maybe even them, even they can suggest projects that we can work on to help them on whatever thing they identify is needed for, for TA in general. Uh, and then try to have them probably every once in a while on the review sessions, and, but and I think uh, that'd be perfect and the only thing missing from, from this. Um, other thing I think that I don't, I don't personally like that much is that I think there's, there's a bit too much focus on the coordination team and I would like to, um, this is more conceptual, but I would like to have, to have it like more open in a way where um, we are one team, but maybe another team appears that also wants to tap into, into this advisory process with a, a larger set of stakeholders that can also go in and seek advice from from ourselves and teas and etc just to just to carry projects forward uh, even if that means uh, say we can have coordination team a and coordination team b at some point that would be perfect and could make use of of this structure yeah that, that, that's great feedback nt thank you yeah definitely uh, something I will I will just mention also is that, yeah, I, I think it's also important to to understand or to uh, to clarify that these calls they they wouldn't happen exactly like that every single week. For example, in a week, if we don't have any projects started, then we might need some more time to review all the active projects that we have, right? So maybe the the format that is presented for Thursday's calls it can be also used for Tuesday's calls if it's needed, right? And then like what you're saying, then maybe we just have like a, a started a project session every two weeks, every month. I don't know, like it would depend. What I'm just saying is that we can, we have that flexibility to 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 move the formats into these two days uh, as as we as we think it's it's good for us. So yeah. Uh, very quickly as well, um, because I, I just remembered that uh, the reason behind doing the project initiation every X every X period is because we've been chatting a lot about you know potentially having some kind of roadmap and and try to have like a more uh, a more longer term or mid to longer term vision and um, trying to uh, I'd say we should always be open but trying to sort of limit the focus on quarter quarterly projects or uh, every six months uh, could be could be great like maybe we have uh, a full week every every four months of of project scoping and ideation with advisors and stuff and then we just we just work for the rest of the period yeah let me add one um, other thing on that because I think it's it's relevant to your point, Antti. Um, one of the things we were thinking about is that, you know, just conceptually, the if if people are busy, so if people in the active contributor, like the broader community are, are busy, and you're trying to figure out when to, how to prioritize time, this structure is more like, you know, Tuesdays are the time, like if you're gonna prioritize any time to, to focus on, you know, giving back and advising the TEC, Tuesday call is is the main one because that's where like the bigger issues and kind of the bigger picture and all that stuff is 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 that's where most of that's going to be happening. Thursday is going to be more nitty gritty project management kind of stuff. So by extension, I, I like this idea that you're talking about, Inti, which is like maybe what we try to do is take that Tuesday call every so often and try to really open it up to like a broader set of stakeholders and get like more feedback um coming in so that's a, that's a really interesting idea uh so i want to start by saying this is so clearly so well thought through um there really really excellent and uh i also think you know as a next step uh fantastic i i don't really see any obstacle 
I'd say, you know, it's clear that this is not the final version, but that um, we're all open to changes. And as we use this process, we'll find improvements and changes that we need to make to uh, achieve whatever goals that it is we're trying to achieve. I think I th there's two things. It's a little bit about what NT said. You know, the question that came to my mind was, um, who can submit a project and um, sort of what's what what format is that? I guess my my concern is that we don't have the coordination team be the bottleneck to opening projects. And maybe if we do that to begin with, we can then solve it later. But I think I think it's important that it's more um, that more people can open projects that it doesn't have to sort of be filtered maybe through the the coordination group. I don't know. There's something around um, that, and as well as like visibility. So. Um, is it i don't know how how well how clarity um how how people can see clarity without having to log in or if people anybody who's interested in what the tec is doing can see what's happening or if clarity is a tool that's a little bit more locked down than we are used to if i can very quickly again i'm sorry um i'm talking too much but um i think Probably one one thing to tie with with how projects are uh, proposed or selected is with uh, governance with funding. I, I guess most of them are going to require funds. So probably what we do is have some like uh, some like, gardens is open anytime, but maybe we have like some uh, regular governance um, periods where uh, there's these. Um, this scoping and advisory uh, time where people can get their proposals reviewed by multiple stakeholders and at the end of the day it's all about them voting on, on gardens that that has the, the ultimate say well, to answer the question on priority sorry i'm just i haven't spoken much i'm just here listening and uh coding away uh you have to make an account, but it's as in anybody can make an account and, and view them. So, with a matter on like operation specific, I think it's a it's a it's not uh, extremely difficult to 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 do so and to join and to to, to share what's what's needed. It is a very difficult interface. Uh, if you're if you're going to want to um, hit it like completely like with no guidance whatsoever, but that's but yeah, that's all. I mean, anybody can see it, but it's a bit difficult to sift through. So if if links are shared, then people will be fine. But actually, it has a lot of functionality because it's. It's for operations, it's for the power user. So, yeah, but I don't think that's a bad thing in this, in this case. Okay, so like, I guess a quick question just to follow up on what Tam's saying. So for instance, I, I noticed on CoinGecko, um, it's calling us the engineering commons instead of the token engineering commons. How do I just like make a quick report or something that says, "Hey, this is a problem," and add it? Do I need I need to make an account for clarity, and then I I can just add it somewhere, or is there going to be some other like, you know, if someone has like some suggestion for improvement, how they can suggest it but not necessarily follow up or just like put it there in front of people's eyes yeah that, that, that's that's a great question and a great example i think yeah so i think the idea would be for example to have this this issue presented on, on tuesday's calls uh, by you griff and you could like own that one and you could ask if people if there's any other people that want to do it or want to help on on achieving that uh, and then that can be reported on Clarity. Uh, and then it's just a matter of you doing the work or the team that it's around this issue doing the work during the week and just presenting the result on, on, the, on the review session and, and that's it. 
that's basically it and that can be yeah. done by by anyone um and in any scope of project so we have to look at sorry yeah we have to look at github into like you're essentially talking about a github issue there right like is there something as a github issue in clarity uh, i'm so, not sure but we can have a like if there isn't it has, that i don't want to say it has to be a github issue it's more about the general concept of there's a way for someone to clearly put something in front of our eyes ideally yeah. asynchronously so um, yeah. because because we just have two minutes left, let me let me um, just suggest on this real quickly. I think that Clarity is a great tool, but we really cannot expect everybody to learn Clarity in order to be able to submit uh, something. So yeah. I think we can come up with like uh, some type of interface for um, you know like even if somebody can't join the Tuesday call, they should be able to post something someplace and know that it's not just going into the ether sphere, right? So it's like yeah, like have an they, issues channel on this. Yeah, yeah, it could exactly. Be. It could be as simple as a Discord channel that yeah. someone can. Exactly. Yeah. So we'll figure out something like that because I've had many times where there's just something and I don't want to forget it, um, and uh, you know, but we need we need a place to capture things um, so that we don't forget them. So mm -hmm. that's a that's a really good point. Um, okay, so uh, we've got one minute, so I think now's a good time to just wrap it up. Um, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Bear, for all this great work. You're just on fire, man. It's really, it's it's really good. Um, it looks awesome. I, I wanted to say, um, we still have... Oops. Um, okay. Uh, I'm going to, we're going to wrap it up because it's, hey, Rex, um, if it's real quick, that's great. Uh, we we need to figure out the structure for whatever, however this Discord section for our predictions is going to look, because at the moment, it's terrible. So, okay, so yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to suggest we we dig into that on the next call, this call that's coming up right now. Cool. And uh, leave, let everybody take off. Everybody, remember one hour from now, Twitter Space. Please be there. Um, it's going to be. I think it's going to be really nice. It's going to be really interesting. Um, so, all right. Hey, thanks everybody. Have thanks, a good Gideon. Day. Thanks, Bear. Thank thanks, you. everyone. Great job, everyone. Great job, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Uh, See you later. Well, I'm not sure where we left, right? Because some present the same. Uh,